name of Jesus we worship I still still remain in the mood of that worship we've done so much or so many things today by the grace of God but we are coming to the end part of this gathering which is to hear the word of God and the Bible says that better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof I want you to bow your heads down. I want you to reason together with the Lord in His presence now. You want to ask yourself the question before you left your house, what was your intention to come to the house of the Lord? Are you just coming because it is Sunday service? Or just because someone compelled you to come, invited you? Why are you really here? Do you know who you're coming to meet? Is it just to meet friends? If you don't have answer to that question, you will just be here today and still go back the same way you came. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that God is not here to do what he has intended to do. But it's because you are not expectant, because you're not prepared, because you're not ready, because you don't even know. And that is why you will just come and go the same way. But that is not the plan of God. Remember the Bible said that when two or where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. God cannot be in our midst just to watch us. He's not a God without a plan and purpose. He's a God of purpose that before he comes, he has planned and prepared what he's about to do. But the question is this, you that is coming, I, do you know you're coming to me, the King of Kings? Do you know you're coming to me, the Lord of Lords? Are you really prepared to say that if only I will stretch forth my hand and touch his garment today, if only by my worship, I will reach the heart of the Lord. If I am only by my obedience, all that I will reach the eyes of the Lord, the God Almighty will see us. He knows you before you leave your place. He knows your yesterday and your tomorrow and your today. He said he knows the plan and the thought he has for you. The thought of peace and not of evil. To bring you to an expected end. Doesn't matter how you look. I want you to bow your head and lift up your voice to God. I don't know why you're here. Today is victory service. I don't know why you're here. He that cometh to the Lord saith, The Almighty God. He must first believe that He is God. And the reward of him that diligently seek him. He that cometh to the Lord. We worship you. Lion of Judah. You are holy. Lion of Judah. Speak to the Lord with all your heart. David said, I lift up my eyes unto the mountain from whence command my help. It's not only the help of whatever infirmities or whatever situation, but to help you to know him.
let the Lord know what you do. He said, come, let us reason together. Let the Lord know why you're here. He knows, but he wants you to know yourself. You don't just come here to, you know, come in and go in. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. You may be seated in his presence before we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Let's appreciate the choir once more again. Thank you so much. I know you guys are very few today. I know you guys are few, but we want to thank God for your lives. And also we want to thank God for all the people that have gathered, more especially those that are visiting us today. Our dear lovely family from all the way from Gothenburg in, in Sweden. You're highly welcome. May God bless you really good in the name of Jesus. Thank you also, Brother Matthew, for coming. God, we hear your humble cry in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Uh, before we go into the sermon for the remaining few minutes, um, please, I would like to implore us, beg us, plead with us. Um, we've been announcing this information sheet. I even sent it out you know, to us individually. And I realized that some of us read it and just ignored it. That is pure disobedience. If you've got that information sheet, it's quite unfortunate we don't have most of the workers or people here today. You know, that's how it is. But please, both those in the kitchen, um, if you've got that information sheet, it will not take you more than one minute, two minutes maximum. It was not enough up to that to fill it and submit immediately. Please do so today. I know you have visited your Facebook, your Instagram, Snapchat, and watched some films, Netflix, and so on. You spend time on them, but two minutes to obey the things concerning the church, the house of God, you can't do that. Please fill your information sheet and return today or by tomorrow, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. And we're going to pray for our two children that are celebrating their birthday today. Um, Brother Kamsi and Chibuike. I want them to come out. You see, we will pray for them that as we go into the summer, I'm going to, by the grace of God today, if you receive it raw, thank God. If your heart thought is like you're being condemned, it's not condemnation, it's just for you to be convicted to wake up. You might not be liking what I will say today because it's not every time we need to. The Bible says we should correct and even rebuke. Praise the Lord. As the Holy Spirit leads us. Please, can we quickly, because I have very short time, Brother Chibi can come see. I know the children are in the kitchen. And unfortunately, one of their teachers are not here. That's why the children didn't go to their classes. Because something happened. I will use it as a, a little refrain. It just occurred to me today. Praise the Lord. Church, this, our lovely children, in this September, are just celebrating their birthday. God knows about the birth of everyone. Let us lift, stretch forth our hands to them, lovely ones, and begin to pray for them. They will fulfill their days on earth. They will fulfill their days on earth. They will be better than their parents in all categories. They will not die young. Nothing will stagnate their stars. They will lead us an example. Separated away from the world and society and unto God. It shall be well with them. Weakness of father's house will not near these ones. Neither the weakness of the mother's house. No pattern of the family shall come near to them. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God, we want to appreciate you for your love towards your children. I want to thank you for their life. Your God has kept them 
brought them thus far. And you promise you'll never forsake nor leave them. <coughs> Father, we are just grateful for the number of years they have spent on earth. And we know that better and greater is yet to come concerning their lives. As we have declared and prayed that these ones will be greater and greater than their parents in the name of Jesus. The weakness of father, son, mother, how will not come near them. Neither any arrow will smite them by the day nor the moon by the night. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pronounce you great. It shall be well with you. Thank you, Father. Not anything, oh God, that is going to cut the life of this one short. We come against it in the name of Jesus. They will fulfill their days on earth and be joy to the society and to their families. In the mighty name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. May the Lord find pleasure in you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Give God a big clap offering. You may be seated. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this great time, opportunity, and hour to hear your word. Holy Spirit, we are relying upon you to speak to us. Let there be healing. Let there be salvation. Let there be deliverance. Strengthen us. Help us. Restore us to the glory of your holy name. Above all things, Lord, let each and every one of us here receive a word from you that will reawaken us, revive us, renew us. Thank you, Father. And I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. <coughs> like I said, um, thank you, Father. You know, last Sunday, I'm trying to digress a bit. If you look at the screen, maybe you have not seen, the media have not posted it, my sermon today by the grace of God. Um, and I want to thank God that um, the Sunday school department, I never knew what um, we have today in the Sunday school, but why I was going through that, who is going to minister, and I have this burden in my heart to go ahead to minister instead of assigning to anyone or to the pastors. And then along the line, you know, I used to pray despite whatever, and then um, I have this burden about this particular topic, you know, something that... You know, we have been able to rush like, you know, someone driving into, you know, all this, um, um, you know, like McDonald's or whatever they call them and then drive out again. That we've left the most important things in our life. You know, last Sunday while I was about to come to church, I think I remember one of my manager at the place or was sent me a text message. To us all that is in the same department that one of our colleagues died. And it's quite strange and, you know, sad um, that because he visited the guy. Of course, the guy has been sick and they spoke. And then all of a sudden he got the news that the guy had passed on. That was last Sunday. You know, I was broken because the guy the, in question was a little bit... Uh, close to me, friendly, at the place of what we used to talk, you know, a lot of things. Of course, he knows my limitations of things. And sometimes we discuss about football because he's a um, um, Liverpool fan. Why I'm an Arsenal fan. And then, so now we just try to, you know, <laughs> talk. He's a Norwegian. And, uh, you know, I said I regretted something that I had this burden to call this guy. So I was postponing it, postponing it, postponing it. And I, anytime I have that burden, of course, once in a while I pray for him, but not that so much serious. But this burden, call him. I don't know why. I didn't call him and he died. And I can't call him again. 
And then that was last Sunday. And then this morning I woke up again this Sunday. And I saw a text message again. From our sister. You know, she never missed church. With her children. You know, and all the children because she's in the department of the children. I mean, one of the teachers. That the dad has passed on this Sunday again. I said, wow. Because I called her about four days. I didn't do like the other one to inquire about the dad. She said she's fine. She has been, you know, and she's out of intensive uh, care in the hospital and now back home. But, uh, you know, just trying to manage things that they have hope. I said, okay, let that hope live on. That was about some days back. You know, we just were encouraged here. And then this Sunday I saw that the man died. But before then I've had this message. And this message has been, you know, really challenging me, challenging, you know. And I look at it, I said, God, all these people that died now, there's no more whatever we called opportunity again in their life to do anything here on earth. You know, we, we are talking about victory service. Victory service, like today we termed it victory service. But I want to just bring it back to us before we go to this. Why do we even think about this victory? Victory, is it when something you expecting happens, then you begin to say, oh, now I am victorious. Or is it just part of it? Let me tell you, the greatest victory, just because of time's sake, is the victory that the Lord Jesus Christ got for us that cost so much at the cross of Calvary. If you want to look into yourself when they say you're victorious, it's not that you don't have issues in your life. It's not that you're not going through things of life. But what are you looking up to? The victory that has been already. And that is why Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. Praise the Lord. And the Bible begins to call us more than conquerors. More than conquerors. Why are we more than conquerors? Because Jesus Christ conquered for us. And now, through his conquering, we become more than, because we are the one benefiting and rejoicing in that conqueror. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And that is why we are called more than he. That conquered for us. And if you look at, like as I was saying, I was taken into a picture again. And the Lord took me into a picture like a trance. When we are talking about conqueror, what have Jesus Christ done? I can tell us a story. Someone, for example, had a ghastly motor accident and lost blood so much that they rushed him to the hospital. And they get into the hospital, they say the first thing we can do to you for you to be able to even survive and take medication is to transfuse blood to you because you have lost so much blood that you cannot survive. And you see when he's talking about transfusion of this blood, it happens to be that the man in question has lost blood. So transfusion has to come with, from a borrowed or someone else's blood for him to live. Which means blood is life. He has no blood anymore. He has lost what he has. And then someone has to bring what he has in order to give this person life. And that is what called transfusion of this blood for the person to live. Jesus Christ gave us his own blood for us to be alive today and be called overcomers. Praise the Lord. 
He lost his own blood because he transfused his blood to us. How many of us have thought about this? You don't have life. And Jesus gave me and you life. And that is the same person that today we treat as however we want it. The Bible says because of that we are called overcomers. Let's go to our text today. Look at our sermon topic. He said, this is not a negotiating world. I know, please permit all these children are with us here today because of the bed and their teachers are not so many. But please, please, children, help us because we have no time. The someone today said, I want you to listen. This is not about, don't look at anybody. Don't look at whether you're a pastor in the house today, whoever you are. This is an individual statement to us. You must be born again. You must be. The word there said, you must be born again. I'm going to explain as far as we go, deeper than what you had. Because what we had in the Sunday school was after. After of this that we're talking now. Before we begin to talk about walking in the spirit. He said, you must be born again. Let us look at John chapter 3 verse 1 to 7. The Bible said, there was a man. It happened really. Of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. And this man is a ruler of the Jews. This same man came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, that is teacher, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do this miracle that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered unto him and, and said, listen here, I'm going to explain this word. Jesus used a word of expression twice. He said, verily, it's not that Nicodemus didn't hear it the first time. What is this thing trying to show? Whenever Jesus wants to, or God wants to say something, and repeated it twice or three times. It is showing how serious and important what he's about to say means to you. That you have to pay attention and take it without negotiation. Jesus said to this man, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, not to the man sitting at your side, listen carefully what the Holy Spirit is telling you. He said, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, except he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, remember the introduction of this man called Nicodemus. A great man, teacher, ruler, way knowledgeable, know everything according to the teaching of whatever doctrine he has. But I'm going to shock you about this man. Jesus Christ said to him, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? I can't get this. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? A serious question. Jesus answered again the same word twice. <laughs> and he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Because when he said born again, Nicodemus asked a question. And that is what we're going to deal with. That question and what, why did he ask that question? 
And Jesus went further to explain the born again. He said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. It's another thing. He cannot now, the first time he said, be born again with very, very, he said, you cannot see. The second time he told him what that born again means. That without this particular type of born again, you cannot even enter. You cannot, you, this is not, a, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Because that which is born of the flesh is of flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is of the spirit. Time. He said, marvel not that I said unto thee. This is where our topic, theme of the sermon came from. He said, marvel not, don't be surprised. Do not be taken out away. That I said unto you, this is Jesus speaking, that it's not something to, you must be born again. You must be born again. I will rush a little bit because of time. We took the first series, and then we'll see how it goes. Let me go back to this man. In the beginning, the introduction was that this man was a great ruler of the Jews. But he did something that we should ask ourselves. Why did this man choose to go and see Jesus by night? Why? It could be. You know, he's a teacher. Teaching the, you know, the doctrine and whatever it is. He's a great ruler who the people respect so much. Everybody is looking up to him in his teaching. Which means they see him as somebody who knows everything he's saying and his teaching. They respect him. So he will not want to be criticized. So what you're telling us, you don't even know it. This man sneaked. Let's assume. To go to see Jesus by night. Or whether, or maybe this man, because he's such a great person, respected, he need a private talk, even to know he, his, his own self. He needed to go to Jesus privately so that he can understand himself, who he is in all this teaching, in all this whatever he thinks. He went to Jesus by night. Remember the Bible says it is by night. Or maybe all his teaching and all his doing has been from afar off just to make the community, the people there, very happy that he knows what he's doing. But he wants to know the reality of it. And then he went to Jesus. I want us to listen. We have so few minutes. Then he went to Jesus to ask that question. And Jesus told him that he has to be born again. So what is the Codemus trying to say? He said, how can a man be born when he's old? Because he knows about this issue of born again, that you are already born. And how can it be? Let me explain this. Every man is born evil. And that is what the Bible says, born of the flesh. The flesh means physical birth. That we all are born into. Every man. Every man. The Bible says there is no one, not even anyone that is good. Because our heart is continuously evil. When the Bible says he that is born of the flesh means everybody is born of the flesh. That is the physical birth. Every one of us was born of the flesh. There's nobody here that was not born evil. I was listening to a preacher. Like I said, I will continue this sermon the next time. I was listening to a preacher one day. And he marveled me what this man said. He said, people are asking questions. Why is God, who is good, who is nice, allow suffering and evil on earth? Why will Christians suffer? Where will this? 
But I picked four things this man said. And number two, break me down until today. He said he wants to tell us, he wants to categorize evil in four categories. He said number one category is natural evil. What is natural evil? He said because of this fallen world, because of this fallen world, the nature is reacting and causing so much evil and problem to the to mankind and to the society. And that is where you have flood. That is where you have earthquake. That is where you have, you know, virus that can come and destroy thousands of people because of the fallen state of what God made. And there was natural evil. I'm just cutting it. The second one I said it hit me is, he said, Personal or what he called moral evil. That is where every one of us belongs to. That because of sin, transgression, iniquity, every man is evil. Wickedness. And the, the, the touching thing here. He said that we carry evil to intermarry. We carry evil to travel to society. We exchange evil by evil all over the world. And there is calamity everywhere. You go and marry, you don't know who you're marrying. Even if you know, you don't know. You travel to another country. You carry your own self. You get there, you begin to portray your own evil. And evil, moral, I'm just cutting the summary of what he said. Moral, personal evil. And that is why you see wickedness to the high core. That people can look at their fellow and kill the person or shoot the person. Because of him. Jesus said, you must be born again. There's no way about it. Look at it. We carry evil into the families. We carry evil into the society. We carry evil into the school. Evil everywhere. The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Nobody knows what you have in your heart where you're sitting here. And we pretend. Nicodemus is a prayer warrior. If you don't know it. Nicodemus pray every week. Nicodemus read the Bible. He studied the word of God. He fasted. Go and study about it. He fasted, but he was not, he never, what he was doing was religious. And Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. You came to Jesus by afternoon. And you're sitting in the church. You have been given offering. It doesn't matter how beautiful the songs sound. It doesn't matter the department you quote yourself to belong to. Nicodemus was such a person. And Jesus told him, I search the heart. You are worshiping from a pharaoh. You are not where you ought to be. All what you are doing is religious and it will not take you anywhere. You must be born again. It's not about your offering. It's not about your tithe. These are ordinances. The Lord is looking at the heart of the people. Evil everywhere. Tell yourself the truth. Say, so time is not going to permit me. And then he went, he talked about supernatural evil, which is where you have all these demonic forces that control things and even force people into so many things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, one of our pastors sent me a video clip. And he said, you don't blame this society why nobody's interested in Christianity anymore. Or anybody. It's not about God or whatever. It's just about us. And when I listened to that video, I, there is no, it's not far from reality. He said, because those call themselves Christians. You know, Jesus Christ was talking to a man. They said he's a great teacher. Is a ruler. It is quite easy 
If I come to a prostitute, maybe by whichever reason he or she becomes one, I said, you must be born again. Or I come to an armed robber, a thief, because of what is it? I say, but how do we come to those who conform themselves like Christians they are not? Are you attending a Christian? Somebody who has lived in the church for 10 years, you must be born again. Hey. Oh, we play with our lives and think that God will be mocked. The Bible says he will never. God is not mocked. And then he said the video, in that video, he said, what is happening to Christians? What is happening to Christians? That people are different people on Sunday. They're on Sunday, there's something else. And they're working places, there's something else. Among their friends, there's something else. <laughs> sometimes it's just that it's not good to pray the prayer and say God take me to heaven to be honest with you we have a problem no man will wish if you, the Lord open your heart to be on this earth this place is full of evil And he said, these are Christians. How do you want people to believe you? You remember, brethren, the kingdom of God is a lifestyle. It's a character. And it's a continuous character. It's not something that when it is raining, you become rain. When it is cold, you become cold. No, 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 no. You're not born again. The kingdom of God is a character. In your working place, you look around. Oh, nobody knows me here. You become something else. And you're a Christian. You come to church. You give offering. What good does he do to you? That your offering at the end takes you to hell. Why are you wasting your time? Why are you wasting your time? I'm sorry I'm not preaching according to my... Why are you wasting your time? Why are you wasting your time? Tell yourself the truth. You can't deceive God in, in, you can't. Why are you wasting your time? That is why today even people are afraid to do things with so-called Christians. Maybe I'll give us a little clue of things being born again. Like I said, I will not go through all these things because of time. People are afraid. When, how dare you think Oh God, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Somebody will be looking at you in your face and the heart is different and he or she is lying to you. And she's saying it as something that is the truth and is looking at a so-called or fellow Christian brother or sister. And having excuses. God said to Nicodemus, I look at your heart. You must be born again. You must be born again. What good does he do you to be in the church for 10 years? Get healing, get breakthroughs, and you carry it to hell. And you carry it to hell. What good does it do you to look so nice and you end up garnishing? Weeping and can that will never end. And beauty is gone. No, but Brethren, anybody can still pray. 
Anybody can stay fast. Everybody, anybody can still give offering. But the heart has not really been regenerated. Let us look at Romans. We're going to be running. I will explain briefly about being born again. Then next time we will continue. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. Nobody knows tomorrow. Nobody knows tomorrow. He said, Nicodemus, if you're not born of the Spirit, you will not enter the kingdom. You don't have the power to go in. God owns all things. You cannot enter. It doesn't matter. You see how you do connections and people don't know your heart. You don't play with God. If you say you cannot, you cannot. You cannot enter. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart, still talking about the heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What is being born again? Just quickly. What is being born again? I tell me like it is a spiritual rebirth. A spiritual rebirth. What does it, that is why the Codemus couldn't understand it. You have been born physically. Everything you do is physically operated around you. And then the Bible, Jesus Christ is saying here that because you are born of the flesh, nothing good will come out of you because of that sinful nature. And everyone is born physically. So being born again means a birth that comes from God, that comes from above. That is called spiritual birth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we see that because of, let us look at Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Oh, time. He said, we are for us by man's sin enter into the world and death by sin, which means through physical birth, sin, which is talking about Adam there, and then sin enter into the world, and then this sin was passed on to all men, for all, for that all have sinned. So, the first birth, that is why Nicodemus was confused, is that we are already born, but that is physical birth. So now, now, for you to be able to operate and make it through this earth, you must have what is called God own original heavenly birth. Because God cannot stop any man from being, of course, He's the one that put the fruit of the womb, but you have to go through any, you know, a woman to be born and things like that, which is a mixed up of man and woman, and then you come out and you become like what the Bible says, you have sinned while you're coming out. Praise the Lord. And God is saying that I have to give you, to burn you again. But because God is a spirit, you can't enter back physically, but it has to be a spiritual renewal, a spiritual rebirth, whereby the things of the spirit will begin to make meaningful to you because you are a spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, what is God trying to say here? Let us look again at John chapter 1 verse 13. John chapter 1 verse 13. He said, which we are born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, like the married people come by their will and God bless them and things like that, not of the, any blood concerning them, but he said, not of the will of man, but this is now of God. It's a birth from above. Is something that is not to take over. You become more like a spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is why when this thing happens, you, the Bible says that your heart has been taken over, that all things, all friends must be passed away. If you're born again and your friends are still the same, you're not born again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He said, all things, a 
faith that is new through the spirit will cause you to understand that the physical birth is your living of the old and they must pass away if it is really an encounter with the Lord. I don't have time anymore. If you really encounter with the Lord, the things you loved before must pass away. There's no negotiation about it. Because that is of the flesh. That is physical. If there's still part of you, you're still doing it, you have not been born again. And that is why he told to the God, you must be born again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going to round up here. We'll continue the series. You know what the Holy Spirit does? Like I said, there is no time. Jesus said, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. You see, this born again of earth is an encounter that is purely from heaven. But you're going to yield to it. When the Holy Spirit convicts you of sin, disturbs you, you did not yield at that time. Like invariably what our brother was trying to say. You did not yield. It's not going to force you. But there is a saving grace available for you to answer that call. And when you answer it, the Holy Spirit begins to live in your heart. And take over that old heart. Praise the Lord. And begin to direct. And that is why you will be in your house. You don't want to go outside. The places you used to visit, you don't know how hatred Come in your heart towards those areas. Pure thing. This is not a thing of guess. This is not a thing of uh, assumption. This is not a thing of being in the church for 10 years. This is not a thing of paying your tithe or offering. This is a personal encounter. And if it's not there, it's not there. I need to rise up on your feet by the grace of God. What is your year on earth? And what is this 2022? September, it will soon go. We will study the second part of this being born again next time. And see why the Bible said there are fruits of the spirit. There are things that ought to be in you if there is this encounter. There's going to be a change of lifestyle, a hatred. Because you are born of the flesh in the beginning. He that heareth had not know your heart like as it was in the day of provocation. Do not harden your heart. It doesn't matter. Play with pastor. Play with the overseer. Don't play with God. Jesus said you must be born again to enter the kingdom. And that's going to be the end one day. You can't hold the earth. You can't hold the plan of God. When God say, check your life. It doesn't matter how much you are ministered on the pulpit. Yes. You must be born again. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. And when a man dies, there's no opportunity again. If you don't hate the old fleshly life. If you can't look at your brother or sister in the face and be who you are truthfully. If you still hide in secret to do one or two things. If you look around, nobody is there. And you think God is not there. And you do things that are not brethren. Look into your life and be real. Because they don't want to face the reality. He wants to know the reality. He needs help. Come to God today. is the day of salvation. And this is an appointed time. Any man who needs help, need help. You come to God to help you. Don't play. Don't form. Don't make guy of anything. Come to God as you are. Pour out and say, God, look at this stronghold. What do I do? Help me. The rich will die, the poor will die, the young, the old. Where do we end? Where do we end? Make a decision of your life today. Two Sundays, two reports. 
We call it sad report, whether it's sad or whatever. They've gone. Whether it's a good report, whether it's a sad report, they are gone. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, continue to speak to us. What shall it profit us? To get all this healing we are asking of. To get all these breakthroughs we are asking of. To acquire all these riches that we are asking of. To get promoted at work that we are asking of. And at the end of it all, oh, the greatest, we end up in hell. What good does it do to us? What profit, what benefit? To build mansions. They're all good. But where are you going? You must be born again. Thank you, Father, for your word. Receive all the glory. Lead us, Holy Spirit, through this week. And give us that grace to obey you in all things to love. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Shall we share the grace in fellowship because of time? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, hey, thank you, Baba Sata. Oh, families, Zabra, Kala, Kosa, Kansara, Randala, Kala, Kosa. Thank you, Father. We're in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, Jesus, my So shall it be in Jesus' name. See you next.